All right, this is going to be part two of creating this lighter in 3ds Max. And um, as you can see here, we are trained right now to work on something that is uh, more than we created before, which is going to be working on the low poly version. And um, this is, of course, a process in which we're going to reduce or uh, kind of lower the poly count of this model to the, to the minimum because <clears throat> this is gonna go into a game engine and we would like actually to reduce the um, um, the the weight of the uh, the high poly a little bit and uh, kind of kind of uh, um, help the game engine to have an easier time rendering and uh, moving this object inside um, inside the game. So whatever. So um, here we're trying to uh, do um, our uh, the thing that we usually do, which is actually uh, removing all the edges and the polygons that are not necessary in order to remove the edges. Just keep holding Control Backspace from the keyboard in order in order to do this quickly and uh, effectively. So uh, for the most part, this is gonna be extremely easy if you are. Um, if you are used to doing this, these types of things. And as you can see here, you've got to be a little bit careful uh, around uh, some of the areas here because um, it seems like we could, we can easily delete something that is necessary or part of the uh, silhouette of the model that makes things uh, work. So we're going to make sure that we are not going to delete anything that is going to play an important role in um, in the uh, the functionality and the essence of the low poly model because this is actually the model that is going to be imported into the game engine and uh, the high poly model actually serves, serves the purpose of creating um, helps for baking to create the the maps that they're gonna go into the texture and software later which is gonna be substance painter and some other things that we're gonna talk about later so uh, when it comes to creating the low poly version there are actually uh, multiple ways of doing this but for the most part this is the uh, this is the method I I usually show and I usually work with uh, because it is it's, it involves less thinking and um, kind of um, there are less things to think about during this process. So um, this method here is kind of throws you, you kind of throws your mind into an automatic mode. You don't have to think too much about what you're doing and you just need to be a little bit careful um, uh, as how much you need to remove. Uh, and there are multiple ways of doing this. Probably we're going to talk about these later. But for the most part, probably this is the easiest, even though it's kind of, it takes a little bit longer because we are dealing with lots of um, vertices manually, which can be a little bit boring sometimes. But for the most part, it's um, it's the safest, I would say. And it's it's something, it, it's, it's the method that is probably going to, give us the most accurate results. All right, so also we're going to remove um, we're going to remove any uh, floating geometry that probably we worked on previously and we actually supported the edges for and everything else. So, as you can see here, uh, this model is filled with floating geometry that is going to be necessary for baking, but it's not, it's not necessarily needed to to be kept in the low poly version because it does not serve any kind of purpose other than being used for baking. So um, for this screw here, you can see that we can use some of the um, 
tools such as the bridge tool in order to bridge between these edges and remove them so control backspace to do this also there are extra things we can remove we can go further than this but if you if you feel like this is enough you're gonna stop there and jump to the ne next piece all right so for this one here it seems like uh, there is uh, some work we can do because uh, it's um this piece here it's is basic but it has so many vertices and so many edges so we can actually do a lot of a lot of things in order to make it look better and as i said before there are many ways of creating the low poly version feel free to experiment probably search online uh, for these methods if i don't talk about them and um yeah i think um this is um i think you're gonna be you're gonna be very very um uh, happy to work with this method because it is it is simple and it does not require lots of thinking and as i said before it's accurate and it's the safest i i believe probably i'm, I'm gonna try and change my mind later probably um probably they will develop kind of uh, good tools to kind of create and work around kind of i don't know maybe make this process easier probably there are tools that i haven't heard of i don't know because i'm not a big guy on when it comes to finding the latest tools and stuff i try to focus on um uh, working on my projects and my models and I try to focus on getting the results and most importantly when it comes to these videos that I do for the people for uh, people who are trying to learn and stuff I, I try to stay away from the tools and the scripts and the things that people find harder to follow me if I use so um, that's why you don't see me using lots of tools. For example, even for UV unwrapping, which is probably the most boring uh, process according to uh, to artists and people who work in 3D, I use the ba very basic tools. I don't use scripts. I didn't. You. I don't use tools because uh, it's it's gonna be harder for you guys if I do this. I'm trying to reduce the amount of um, or the kind of uh, the 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 intensity of me using uh, shortcuts and uh, hotkeys and stuff because I want you to follow with me and uh, to follow what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, this is the baseline. This is what I. These are the rules I'm trying to follow because this is this is for you guys. In the end of the day, this is. Um, this is not kind of um, making my kind of changing my life when it financially or when it comes to my baseline or something of that sort uh, so um, yeah if I I'll be honest with you guys if if I want to make more money I would like to I would I want to I kind of I will spend my time doing other things rather than wasting these hours um, teaching you the things that are not gonna push me further so um, this is something I'm doing kind of as a payback and as uh, um, as a return of a favor for those who taught, who taught me and the things I found online for free and um, the lessons and the courses I bought even even the things that you pay for uh, you feel like the person who created the uh, the stuff that you're watching or you learn or you're learning from you feel like it is um, you feel like they're doing you a favor because uh, to be honest when you reach a certain level um, your priorities change and you don't want to actually or or for whatever reason 
some people actually start teaching people and they 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 they, they reach a point when they realize that it is not actually making them move forward first of all and kind of um, um, I would say that the first reason for this realization is of course it's financial because we are all human beings after all and we all have bills to pay and we have to make money so especially for those people who have lots of work coming in and prior priorities change and stuff so lots of people who start channels on YouTube quit for I would say 90% because of financial reasons and because of lack of time change of priorities so I would like to keep making these videos these tutorials for you guys but um, I would say it's um it's something I would I, I like doing and it is something I'm doing because I would uh, I would like to pay back and give back to the community and to the people who kind of um, I'm, I'm finishing the uh, the cycle and I'm trying to make sure that um, life goes on all right so uh, what, what what we are doing here is creating smoothing groups if you haven't guessed it yet so um, smoothing groups are a great way of smoothing things out when it comes to um, the low poly version because we cannot apply turbo smooth obviously so what we will do is we will um, select um, all the polygons go to smoothing groups and clear all, smooth, all the smoothing groups as you will see for example uh, when it comes to this one um, and um, uh, we'll probably um, close the um, that, that that thing right there and uh, when it comes to smoothing groups as I said um, you're gonna select the elements or, or all the polygons and you have got to clear the the smoothing groups and you're gonna auto smooth them very very uh, easily so um, the smoothing groups tools in 3ds max are very straightforward uh, sometimes uh, 3ds max doesn't really give you an easy time and uh, sometimes it's not going to be very straightforward so you're going to have to do some manual work other than that it's going to be very easy and uh, of course it is extremely important so there is no um there's no way you can uh, go around it and uh, try to cheat the system somehow All right, here we are in UV unwrapping, and um, as you can see here, this is uh, the process in which we are trying to um, unfold the UVs and try to put everything in place. So um, I've, I've created multiple videos explaining how to do UV unwrapping before. So um, this time we're gonna go through it um, very quickly, probably, and um, we're gonna try to explain the basics behind the process of UV unwrapping and um, we're gonna show you some examples here uh, obviously I'm gonna UV unwrap the whole thing and in front of you probably I'm gonna skip a few or multiple small pieces just in case uh, you get bored or something so um, as you can see here I, you, I work a lot with the, uh, the box mapping tool in 3ds max uh, UV uh, unwrapping modifier and um, uh, as I said in multiple occasions UV unwrapping is all about trying to break down the pieces into se separate islands or separate UV shells and you're gonna stitch everything together of course the things that need to be stitched together uh, using the shortcuts um, shift as from the keyboard or right click then stitch selected from the menu list and the uh, second part of the uh, UV unwrapping is of course organizing your pieces or your UV shells that belong to the same piece properly 
and putting them somewhere around the uh, 0 to 1 UV space. And uh, later we are going to uh, give this um, this piece here a, a, checker, a checker texture and uh, we're gonna um, uh, use this checker texture for multiple reasons. First of all because we want to make sure that there aren't any stretching or distortion in, in, uh, in our mesh. Second of all we're gonna compare the size of the UV shelves for different pieces using this checker texture because visually we can compare the size of the checker texture to the checker texture of the other pieces and there are multiple reasons for uh, using it properly uh, they're not that important compared to these two reasons and uh, the final stage of UV unwrapping is creating what we call the UV template which is extremely important for texturing and for creating the maps and texture maps inside Substance Painter. So uh, we are now UV, trying to UV unwrap the next piece and as you can see here there are so many pieces here. It's it's ridiculous but you know what it's not gonna be that ridiculous when we start stitching uh, these pieces together and trying to organize everything uh, very closely and uh, neatly it's gonna be way better all right so all right as you can see here we are gonna be trying to organize everything closely like this probably we're going to put some some of these pieces in a very close place all right after you're done you better make sure that um, you match the checker texture with the other pieces. All right, for this piece, probably is going to be the same thing. So um there isn't there aren't a lot of things lots of things we can talk about so probably i'm going to shut up for for a moment and uh, let you uh, see what i'm doing
All right, when it comes to this piece here, um, you're going to be a little bit careful because um, there is a rule that, um, that I try to follow, which is don't actually stitch the pieces or the UV shells that are separated by 90 degree angle. This is very important because we want to get the best UV, uh, actually the best um, Noma maps when we uh, do baking in substance major later. So um, the conclusion is not every um, not every two pieces that can be stitched should be stitched together. This piece is, um, is is simple, but there are so many different pieces scattered uh, or UV shells scattered all around the place. We gotta be a little bit careful here because we want to make sure that we follow, we are following uh, the guidelines necessary in order to get something nice. So right now we are going to work on the smaller pieces and um, obviously this is not going to be uh, harder than uh, what we've done before so it's going to be pretty easy to uh, keep stitching the pieces and organizing them and uh, apply the checkered texture.
also when it comes to seams um, it's a good idea actually to hide your seams because um, it's never good that the seam is going to be visible when you take a closer look at your model so if you have an opportunity to hide the seams please hide them because it's going to be better All right, so we have lots of small pieces um, to work with and to work on. So um, the thing is, these things here are going to be extremely repetitive. So uh, the UV wrapping is about doing the same thing over and over again and having the pieces to do them all. So. All right, the um, this piece here seems like um, it is hard to even write, but it is very easy. So uh, probably something happened here. So um, as as you will see, um, um, just uh, create a loop and um, deselect the outer the outer side of this um, of this loop we created and. Um, do what we usually do which is create the seams cut it to cut it open then use use pelt extend it a little bit and you're gonna get something that looks like this
are these small pieces um, we're gonna attach them together because uh, this way we're gonna batch our um, UV unwrapping process and we'll be able to um, we'll be able to do uh, everything at once and this is gonna save us some time and some effort of course Uh, we're gonna try right now to um, to actually prevent these pieces from overlapping with each other, which is a really important thing to do if we want to get textures that differ from each other and look different and look like they are real, realistic. All right, right now after we UV unwrap everything, we're gonna attach everything together and um, we will, um, as you can see here, uh, discover something that we didn't UV unwrap, 
which is uh, something we need to be careful when it comes to uh, um, um, we need to check out if there are any lock pieces before actually doing anything further than that so this is a very important thing anyways uh, we are right now trying to um, attach everything together to create the UV template which is basically bringing all the pieces together in inside the 0 to 1 UV space The, um, the the process of actually um, the process of trying to uh, creating the UV template uh, is about putting the pieces uh, closely to each other closer to each other and try to use the UV space you have uh, uh, and um, kind of to optimize everything you have and um, not try to not leave lots of empty spaces because um, there is a resolution you have which is uh, for the most part they use 2k textures and uh, we want to uh, to use this space uh, intelligently uh, and uh, kind of uh, have uh, the maximum resolution we can have so this is a very important thing to keep in mind when working on the UV template Alright, so when we are done with the UV unwrapping, um, we are right now trying to work on uh, the process of naming our pieces. So we have the high poly and we have the low poly. So we're going to try to name both of them depending on um, how many pieces we have. And there's There are no rules in particular. We're just giving some names depending on what what function or what purpose they serve 
and we're going to use a suffix as the low poly or the half one for the high poly and one for the low poly. So as you can see here, um, it's all about giving uh, separate pieces, uh, different names, and you don't have uh, to give them particular names. We just need to make sure that the naming is kind of matching perfectly when it comes to the low poly and the high poly because the baking process in Substance Painter depends on it and everything else when it comes to texture depends on this process in particular. So there there is no room for mistakes here so ladies and gentlemen uh, we're gonna have to be very careful when it comes to this process and sometimes it's gonna it can cause you lots of pain if you make mistakes here so going back and trying to figure out where where, where you made some mistakes so you're gonna be uh, alert to anything that goes wrong during this process especially so um sometimes i double and triple check because you literally cannot this is like programming it's uh this is like you working on a code um the uh the words and the letters have to be, have to be perfectly matching each other you, you don't even you, you're not even allowed to use a kind of um the uh, different uh for example couple of letters small or big letters if for the low poly for instance for instance you use um the small letters and for the high poly you use uh big letters it's not gonna work so you gonna it's gonna be completely uh uh it's, it has to be completely um the same the only difference should be the suffix that you use whether it be low high hp lp high poly low poly whatever you choose uh, the only difference is the suffix
All right, so um, this is going to be the end for uh, the second part. And in the final and uh, third part, we're going to work on texturing a substance painter. I just wanted to separate between um, and kind of keep the, uh, the last part, which is going to be texturing on its own because um, it's actually a good idea to have the texturing separated because on this second channel, I want to emphasize uh, working on Substance Painter and the other things that come with it and all the details necessary in order to learn about Substance Painter. So thank you very much and I'll see you on the next part.